In this session, I will get through light bleeding in EV and how to fix it. I think this is one of the most common problems that people have, but it's really easy to fix if you know how. So to show it, I have made a scene with a plane and a cube, and I made an entrance to that cube. And before I start showing how you fix it, I will show what light bleed is. So I will go into the cube here, and now you can see that we have the entrance here and we get some light into that entrance. But we also get light on the edges all the way here, on the ceiling and the walls and so on, all the way where we should not have any light because we don't have any light reaching to that spot up here. It's coming like bleeding from the outside, from the on the roof here and then down into the object inside. So that is light bleeding and that is what we are going to fix. First of all, we need a correct type of light here. And since it's outside, we should always work with the sunlight. So I select light here and as you can see now, it's a point light. So we change it to the sun. And when we change the sun, we also need to change the strength. So I put it down to like two or something. So now we have the correct type of lamp. The problem we have right now is that it's even worse here when it comes to the shadow. So we need to fix that first. And that we do by going to the render properties, select the shadows. And since it's the sun, we change the cascade size. My recommendation is to always have this to maximum resolution. It will always be much better when it comes to the sun. You can play with the cube size when it comes to the other types of light because you will use many uh, point lights, area lights and so on to build your scene. But normally you just have one sun. So just use the maximum resolution here. It will not do that much of uh, render time for you but it will do a lot for your shadow. So now we have a much better shadow, still very jagged and uh, we have a lot of edges and um, corners all over the place, but we have it on the right place anyway. So it's a start. And now we need to fine tune the sun. So I will go to the light bulb here. That we say object data properties. And I will select shadow list here so we can get down a bit and I will open up something called Cascaded Shadow Map, which is all the properties you need to change the sunlight so it works. One thing you need to have is the count to four. If I have it less than four, you get a really lousy shadow. So put that to maximum like this. And then it's all about the distribution. So I will go into this building again so you guys can see how it looks. And when I now change it to a lower number, you can see that we get a higher bleeding all over the place. So what we need to do is take the distribution all the way up to one. And when we do that, you can see that now we hardly have any light bleeding at all. We have just a thin line going through. Uh, we don't have that jagged thing here. It's straight, nice, or yeah. It's nice all over. So we have already fixed it now. The only thing that we need to do more is just to put in some type of thickness on the wall here. So we select the cube and then I just go to some modifier, add modifier and I select solidify here. And as soon as I do that, you can see that now the edges have no light bleeding at all. It works very, very good. So that is all you have to do to make it work. And this works even if you have like soft shadow or something. So I can go now to the render properties, uh, put in soft shadows, and we can put in a value here so you can see it gets soft like that, but still no light bleeding. So it's really, really good. And now let's say that um, we have some light bleeding, as you can see here, because we have a higher distance from the camera to uh, the wall and so on. So uh, this is an edge case, but how should we fix it? If we, I have a great distance like this, I still have some light bleeding here. So, so how should I fix it? Well, then we sheet. 
uh, EV can only see what it sees. That means that in some cases, if we build an object inside an object, it will not see the inner object. And that means that we can force the light to be on top of another object and then get rid of the object inside. So what I will do in this case is just to duplicate this cube and just scale it up a bit. So if I press Shift D and then just press S to scale it up like this, then you can see if I go in here, I will not have any light bleed. And if I now uh, go to select this cube, which I did now, and go to modifier, take away the solidifier, still no bleeding as you can see. Now I go to the render properties and I take down the cascade size here to like 1024 and still no light bleeding more than here. So here you can see some light bleeding but otherwise no light bleeding at all. So that is a sheet way to do it but it works wonderful. So if you don't uh, have a scene where you need, have a camera that, that you need to see a lot of the outside then you can just put the cube inside a cube and it will solve everything really quick and without any problems and you still got the light shining through on the walls and so on without having the light beads on the edges. So that is way, one way to do it put an object inside an object and EV doesn't exist uh, or for EV it doesn't exist and you can do whatever you want. The only thing EV knows is what it can see and it can see the entrance. So we get light from the entrance into this one. So now you know that as well. And with all that knowledge, using a sunlight, using a high distribution and uh, put in some uh, high cascade size, you have solved the problem. So no more light bleed for you. And that is something really good because many people are fighting that. So now you know it and I will see you in the next session. So I just say bye for now and see you then.